So welcome to the Conservative Yeshiva. It's, uh, I'm sorry that I can't be uh, over there in Atlanta, but I hope you're having a great time. And um, I uh, would like to share some of the Torah of this institution from uh, a few thousand miles away in Jerusalem. So my name is Rabbi Joel Levy. I'm one of the Rashi Yeshiva, one of the heads of the Conservative Yeshiva here in Jerusalem. And uh, I've been teaching here for about uh, 20 years and studying here as well as a student. I want to teach a little bit uh, of Torah connected to the life of community, the life of Torah that we're trying to build here, and uh, maybe to shed a little bit of light on what the strengths of this institution are. Um, obviously, just to share Torah, but also in order to encourage people to come and make a relationship with this place, to come out to Israel, uh, or to find other ways to, to learn Torah from the uh, Conservative Yeshiva in Jerusalem. So uh, it's an incredibly very uh, open community. There are students who've come to the yeshiva from all over the world. Obviously, we have students from North America. Um, and the students from North America come from a variety of different religious backgrounds, many from the conservative movement, but also many from the reform movement, from Hebrew College in Boston, which is a pluralistic um, uh, program for training rabbis and educators, from RSC, the Reconstructionist Rabbinical College in Philadelphia. Uh, and from across, all across North America. We also have students from South America, uh, we have students from Brazil this year, from Western Europe, UK, France, Eastern Europe, uh, Poland, Hungary, uh, Russia, uh, and even a student from, from uh, Uganda, from uh, the Abu Dhabi community uh, in Africa. And uh, those students are also coming from a variety of different religious backgrounds as well. And the reason why we manage as a community to hold together, to share the space that we try to create in the Beit Midrash. Um, the reason why that works is because the essence of the community we're trying to build is based around Jewish learning. And in the context of Jewish learning, diversity is an advantage. You want to be in a Beit Midrash with people who you, you're going to argue with, who are going to have different ideas to you. People are going to sharpen your own ideas, people you can bounce ideas off. And, and who will challenge your ideas and maybe even reject your ideas. So diversity in the context of our shared intellectual life and our quest to understand what the will of God is in the 21st century, diversity is an advantage. There are things that all the students share. I think anyone who comes here is looking for a space which is intellectually open, where our learning is leavened by academia, by knowledge of history and by knowledge of science. I think everyone who comes is looking for that. Everyone who comes is looking for um, an egalitarian space. Uh, the learning here, almost uniquely in Jerusalem, is fully egalitarian. Men and women share the space equally. But despite the things we have in common, there's also an enormous amount of diversity which is expresses itself in the, uh, in the kind of robust intellectual dialogue that takes place in the Beit Midrash are about what happens when we move from the world of the intellect to the world of practice. What happens when rabbis who argue about particular activities, how one ought to perform certain acts, in this case we're going to be looking at some ritual acts. We're looking at the question of how you say tefillat aderech, how you say the Shema, and how you bring in Shabbat. Um, how do rabbis who argue about how you do certain religious things actually share space when it comes to performing those religious duties? So the sources we're going to look at are about making the transition from the open world of the intellect to the world of actual religious practice. And how do Jews of different persuasions, different stripes, different practices, how do they actually share religious space together with dignity. And uh, the three sources which I've chosen to teach today all propose that that journey from the world of the intellect to the world of practice can take place in slightly different ways, with different variations. And you need to stay on your toes and try and work out what's going on in each of the three narratives that I'm presenting when the rabbis who argue about certain things try and actually perform those duties, those practices together in the real world. So I hope you enjoy the learning. I'm going to, uh, at this point, I think we're going to, I'm going to hand out sheets, or Andy's going to hand out sheets, 
and uh, and uh, once the sheets have been handed out then I'll give a little brief overview and then we'll go into a short Chavruta period turning to the person next to you and just reading some of these some of these sources together so I look forward to learning with you and, uh, and I hope we have a, a fruitful and interesting period of study now thank you I hope you enjoyed the learning just now Something magical happens when you're actually exposed to and reading classical Jewish sources for yourself, trying to understand it for yourself, trying to work your way through what your relationship is with the classical sources of Judaism. You know, the students who come here to Jerusalem, almost all of them, I'd say, their primary goal was to learn how to open up the classical sources of Judaism for themselves. That they will have been inspired by what happened in their synagogue lives, something will have triggered at some point in their religious lives, at some point during that journey towards adulthood, and they'll have in their minds this sense that they really need to take a year and expose themselves to the classical sources of Judaism for themselves, and that's true of for the for most beginning students who've never cracked open a book of Talmud before, to a student who might have already been studying three or four years or is well on the way to becoming a rabbi or uh, other forms of higher Jewish learning. That sense that something magical happens, something deep and authentic happens when you're reading sources for yourself, I think unifies all the learning we do at the yeshiva. I think all the teachers here feel incredibly privileged to be sitting in a Beit Midrash and learning Torah on a regular basis. Um, for many of us that's a real dream. You know, we get to take young people, the kind of creme de la creme of educational processes in North America, bring them here and to sit in a break midrash with 40, 50, 60 young people for the year is an enormous privilege and um, I don't have to do any of that crazy work of trying to convince people to learn Torah or uh, convince them that this life is meaningful because they've all chosen to be here and I simply get to study and to teach Torah uh, every day. What I would say though is that it's a, Jerusalem's a long way away and I know that um, it's not easy to come here. Um, you know, we have many people who come for the summer, for three weeks, for six weeks, students who come for the year, students who just pop in and say, look, I really want to do a week of learning and who come by themselves or come as a group. But if that's not possible, and if making the long journey from North America to Jerusalem is too difficult, there are a variety of different ways that this institution can reach out to you and serve you and, uh, and provide a source of, of rich, deep Torah wherever you find yourself in North America. There are a variety of online resources that the yeshiva has put together which are, are simply available on our website. Um, recorded shiurim and videos and uh, online resources that you can access. Um, there's also the amazing Daf Shvu'i, um, a, a project that's been running for years now which um, over the course of every single week teaches a page of Talmud and there are thousands of people who receive our, our Daf Shvu'i um, and learn Talmud in a slow, patient, ongoing way building through week by week by week and learning an enormous amount of, of Torah. Uh, the Yeshiva also sends scholars in residence to North America on a regular basis and if you're interested in that you should uh, contact the USCJ. And, um, and they can definitely be involved in arranging for a scholar in residence. And we can also arrange for virtual scholars in residence to come and serve in your kahila, um, teachers who are based here in Yerushalayim, to come and uh, teach online uh, in your community. Um, we really believe that um, uh, the Torah that comes out of this institution is very special. We believe that it's not an ivory tower where people should uh, shut themselves off and be learning Torah and not spreading the word. We believe that Kimitzion Teitzei Torah Udvar Hashem Yerushalayim. We believe that the, uh, the Torah that comes out from Zion and from Yerushalayim is a very special Torah. And um, we want to find any way we can to serve the communities in North America, South America, Europe and around the world. Um, so make the first move, like take a step. If you're interested in learning Torah from the yeshiva, then look us up online or contact the, United, the USCJ. Uh, reach out to Rav Andy, who's there, and I'm sure we'll give out cards uh, as part of this uh, learning uh, program. And uh, find a way of making a link between your kahila and the conservative yeshiva in Yerushalayim. 
um, the students who found their way to the yeshiva for the year all came because of things that happened to them before they came here. We're not the ones who created, uh, in, many, in many, many occasions, we're not the ones who created that spark or that thirst for Jewish learning, but we want to be involved in creating that thirst amongst students in North America now so that people then in the future will come and find their way into the, uh, into the Beit Midrash of the, of the conservative yeshiva. So thank you very much for coming. I hope you enjoyed the Torah that we learned together and I really hope that we find other opportunities to share Torah together in the future.